Hello everyone, this is uh, Dr. Seher from DentaBest and today we are going to do the orthodontics review. So let us start with it. So here we are going to do the following uh, topics starting with epidemiology of malocclusion, angles classification, growth and development, orthodiagnosis, uh, treatment planning, biology of tooth movement, orthomaterials, appliances, growth modification, adult treatment and combined surgical and ortho. So we can see here uh, epidemiology of malocclusion that uh, crowding, incise of crowding tends to increase in children and uh, we know that the permanent incisors since they require more space uh, than the uh, primary and the lower incisor crowding has a tendency to continue to worsen into adulthood that is because of the late mandibular growth. Now the malocclusion, one thing that is very important that the malocclusion, if they ask in the exam what is the etiology of uh, class 1, uh, class 2, class 3 malocclusion, your answer should not be, for example, in class 2 malocclusion. Usually the students answer that class 2 malocclusion is because of the habit. No, it is not because of the habit. Mostly it is hydratory, less frequently caused by tongue sucking or trauma. So this is a very important point we should know. Now what is Sunday bite? Uh, people who have a class 2 profile, they try to put their mandible forward to improve their aesthetics. That is called a Sunday bite. Now you can see some more pictures here like anterior posterior cross bite. You can see this is the crowding. So for the newly erupted mandibular incisors, you can also see the mamblons there. The case of open bite. So anterior open bite can be easily seen in the patients who have uh, thumb sucking habits, the most common uh, sequelae or complication of it. You can see these are the protruded incisors like in class 2 division 1 habits is one of the reasons. And we can see here uh, ectopic eruption, the tooth that is erupting in the wrong position. This is a midline diastema. We'll discuss more details of it later on. Now, the mock breathing habit, patient can develop open bite, long face, and tonsillitis, narrow, narrow oropharyngeal spaces, chronic rhinitis, and deviated nasal septum are the common cause of uh, causing the mock breathing, especially in children. They have more habits uh, and adenoids are one of the cause of that. Thumb sucking, as I already explained you briefly, and two open bite, it's the most common result of it. And because of the pressure exerted by hyperactive vaccinator, constant sucking can lead to constricted masria that's responsible for developing posterior cross bite. They have proclined incisors and retroclined mandibular incisors. And uh, very, very important that uh, the thumb sucking habit is more detrimental as compared to pacifier. Because when the child sucks the thumb, he's putting his thumb on the chin all the time that will retard the development of the mandible. Now the different theories of the growth and development we have like the direct genetic control theory that says that bone is directly under control of genetics. There's epigenetic that states that cartilage is the determinant of bone growth. But the most accepted theory we have is the functional matrix theory that states that growth of the bone is influenced by the soft tissues. So the soft tissues which are influenced by environmental changes. So that is the growth control theory, the functional matrix theory. Now the bone ossification endochondral within a cartilage, like a highline cartilage. So bones of your cranial base, which are more under genetic control, like ethmoid bones, sphenoid bones, they're under endochondral ossification. Intramembranous ossification happen in a membrane made up of collagen. And the bones of your cranial vault, like your frontal bone, your parietal bone, uh, temporal bone, they are more under intramembranous ossification. So here in endochondral, both of cranial base, uh, occipital bone should be there. And we have the temporal bone that is more for your intramembranous along with the frontal parietal bones. Also the bones of your face are intramembranous, maxilla mandible, except mandibular condyle that is under endochondral ossification. Now these are some of the growth curves we can see like Scammon's growth curve, growth velocity curve that you can go through it that how different tissues are growing with age. A cephalocaudal growth gradient is important. The structure which are farther from the brain grow more and later in time. For example, mandible which is farther from brain, it will grow more 
for a longer period of time and start growing slower as compared to maxilla which is closer to brain it will grow less it will grow faster and for a shorter period of time now you can see this is a growth velocity curve which states that growth in the height is very rapid after birth but deaccelerate to a lower constant level in childhood then just before puberty there is a dip you can see and then again it will peak at the pubertal growth spurt and then finally slow down and stop the growth at maturity so class 1 class 2 and class 3 occlusion we already discussed about it you should be very thorough with the canine as well as the motor relationship and sign of incipient malocclusion is malocclusion that has started how you would know if already you have lack of spacing in primary dentition that's bad because spacing is considered to be good in primaries because it will give more space for permanent to adjust if already crowding of permanent incisors and the mixed dentition is there or there is a premature loss of primary mandibular canine unilaterally because it will always lead to midline shift and distal lingual collapse of permanent mandibular incisor now you can also see uh, the cross bites right cross bite can be skeletal cross bite because of a small maxilla or the big size mandible like a skeletal cross bite or you can develop functional cross bite like in case of thumb sucking functional cross bite does not have smooth closure to occlusion it will develop interferences definitely hereditary again is number one cause of the cross bite and secondary will be the habits supernumerary teeth or the trauma there is something called as a scissor bite Scissor bite happens when you have very wide maxilla and very narrow mandible. So maxilla is completely enclosing the mandible inside. So this is called as bilateral complete lingual cross bite. That is your scissor bite. So cross bites don't get uh, treated themselves. They don't align themselves. They get worsened with time. So you should start treating cross bite as early as possible in the first stage of ortho treatment. So there are actually two stages of ortho treatment. The first is called as the early interceptive phase and that phase can start once the child has all the permanent incisor and the permanent first molar erupted. That's around uh, 8 to 11 years of age, right? That's a time period of early interceptive phase. Now, early interceptive phase, you can use the, ha the appliances, your, auto your habit breaking appliances, your functional appliances, your headgears, they may use in this stage. Now, once all the permanent teeth are erupted, excluding your third molars, definitely, uh, your comprehensive phase is going to start after 12 years of age. That's when you use actual the fixed orthodontic appliances. So cross bite should be treated as early as possible in the first stage of treatment. And you are using the palatal expander appliances for that. Once the cross bite looks treated, you have to still keep the expander appliance there for the retention phase. When it is expanding your palate, it can create diastema, which will close on or slightly obtuse. Now cephalometrics, as we have very good attachment on that, there we can see more pictures of cephalometric, definitely SM plane is very important for superimposition of cephalometric radiograph, POR plane, Frankfurt horizontal plane that we very commonly use. Then we have the mandibular plane. So when mandibular plane coincide, that is from gonion to nathion. So what these landmarks start for it, right? What is porion? What is orbital? Gonion, nathion. So we have some of the details in my notes and attachments too. So gonion to nathion is mandibular plane. When it combines with another plane or when it intersects with another plane, that will make an angle. Another plane, your facial plane. Mandibular plane angle. The normal value is 20 to 25 degree, but more than normal value means you have a long phase open bite class 2 and less than normal value means you have a short phase deep bite and class 3. Now you have the SNA angle, you have the SNB angle. We already know SNA value is 82 degree, SNB is 80 degree and ANB is the difference between them. So SNA is the positioning of the maxilla with respect to cranial base, SNB positioning of mandible and ANB is AB difference between the maxilla and the mandible. So we can see here in this phase that uh, the biology of the tooth movement so you have the heavy forces and then you have the light forces so heavy forces do not necessarily speed up your uh, tooth movement they are actually going to make your tooth movement overall slower why because with heavy forces you have formation of hyaline zone that necrosis or pedial 
that will create a lag phase in between when it is healing and then the second phase of tooth will start with heavy forces. So heavy forces, they actually delay your overall tooth movement as compared to light forces which are more physiological and they give more continuous tooth movement. With the heavy forces, you have undermining resorption. Undermining resorption in osteoclastic activity is more than osteoblastic activity. And with the light forces, you have more frontal resorption. When osteoblastic and osteoclastic activity, they are balancing each other. Also, we know with light forces, we have inflammatory mediators being produced that will bring the changes and remodeling of your PDL, like uh, the uh, CAMP, substance P, prostaglandins, hormones like VTH, calcitonin, while with heavy forces, uh, there will be a piezoelectric signal like a spark will be created and immediately the tooth will move. And we have more pain definitely through the heavy forces that takes place. Now forces are the vectors and they have direction and magnitude. So in the healthy tooth, the center of resistance is around half of the distance from the alveolar crest to the root apex. Now movement is tendency to rotate and may refer to rotation, tipping and torquing in the orthodontic movement. Couple is we know it's a two equal and opposite forces. So when you apply the couple there will be pure rotation of the tooth around the center of resistance regardless of application of point application of the couple. Now in the movement we have three orders of rotation, three orders of tooth movement, first order for rotation, second for tipping and third order is for torquing. Now when you apply the force through the center of resistance, there will be pure translation or pure, pure bodily movement. But when you apply the force at any point other than center of resistance, there will be tipping or rotational movements. Now we can see here pure rotation as I already told you when the tooth rotate around the center of resistance and center of rotation is at the same point when a couple is applied. Tipping is easiest movement but least desirable as it can always happen even if you don't plan it. Then we have the crown movement. So for crown movement to happen center of rotation is at the root. For root movement to happen center of rotation is at the crown. Root movement is considered to be most difficult tooth movement while tipping is the easiest. Now we can see some of the component of the mixed up fixed appliances like bands, bracket, arch wires, auxiliaries. Now next topic is the use of functional appliances or the orthopedic appliances. So these appliances are used in the early interceptive phase when the child is still growing. So the functional appliances like twin block, activator, herbs, bionator, these appliances, they are used as functional appliances. They are utilizing the functional growth, functional force of the muscles. So these appliances like twin block appliance, one of the appliances that is very commonly being used while activator, half appliance, bionator, you can see they are single piece appliance. One part of the appliance goes in the maxilla and one part goes into the mandible. So basically patient mouth is closed with these appliances inside the mouth, but twin block being Two piece appliance easier for the patient to wear. Activator appliance is more bulky while bionator is like a trimmed down version of the activator. Herbs appliance is also called as a telescopic appliance or the pin and tube appliance. So what you are doing in functional appliances, functional appliance bring both skeletal and the dental changes and these appliances they are utilizing the functional pull of the muscles to bring changes in the growth of the skeleton. So they have both skeletal and the dental effect. All of them are mainly used for treating class 2 malocclusion. They restrain the growth of maxilla and displace the mandible forward. So allow normal mandibular growth. Okay, so now let us see the topics of headgear. We are already familiar with the headgear. They are orthopedic appliances. And uh, the headgears, we can see they are high pull headgear, straight pull, cervical pull and the protection headgear. So high pull headgear is used in the patient with a class 2 open bite, straight pull, J-hook, class 2 with a deep bite and cervical pull headgear is a straight pull. It puts direct straight distal directions on distal forces on maxilla and retracts your canines and incisors. So basically all these headgears, they are modifying growth of maxilla, they are restraining the growth of maxilla to allow the mandible to catch up. They also help in reinforcing the anchorage 
and they can retract or protract the max retreat. For example, in the case of reverse full headgear, this is the only headgear that is used for treating class 3 that can protract your maxilla too. Okay, so on this slide, we see the appliances to correct the crossbite. So they will correct the transverse discrepancy by expanding the palate at the mid palatal suture by the dental expansion. So we can have discrepancies in orthodontic in three planes, right? First plane is anteroposterior plane. The second plane is the transverse plane. The third plane is the vertical plane. So anteroposterior discrepancy is like class two, class threes. Transverse discrepancy is like cross bite and the vertical plane discrepancy is like open bite, deep bite. So we have two types of palatal expander, rapid palatal expander like Harex and Has, where the expansion happen at the rate of 0.5 mm per day. Then you have slow palatal expander appliances like your transpalatal arch appliance, your quad helix, uh, Hollies. They can do the expansion at the rate of 1 mm per week. Now there are some appliances to control the vertical dimension, uh, vertical discrepancies too. Like intrusion arch appliance will help in treating your deep bite by extruding the molar, intruding the incisor. And the extrusion arch appliance will be used for correcting the open bite. Hi my dear student who are preparing for IMBD ADAT a part 2 exam. Uh, thanks so much for watching this preview video of the subject. If you really liked it, please buy the full version by clicking on the link given in the description. With the purchase of every video, you will be getting free live assessment and evaluations on the subject as well. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the DentaBest channel now to get the latest updates on the smart videos. If you have any questions, please comment me in the box below. I, Dr. Seher from DentaVest, wishes you all the best for exam and thanks again for watching.